welcome back. So we're going to jump right into it. This is a 30 ounce um, straight. And I wanted to show y'all just from this point on because last week I did the same thing. I just doused the cup in a custom glitter mix that I made. And so I just did the same basic thing. And I am using Color Fix Glitter Glue to seal this in, and I really love it for sealing the glitter in. Um, you can use it to apply the glitter. I haven't had much success, but the, but the sealing it in, I get no movement from the glitter whatsoever. So this is a custom mix that I made from several uh, different glitter companies that I have. So I will list those down below. And I just wanted a green but kind of gold mix so that it would match the vinyl that we're going to be using here in a minute. So I went in with a coat of epoxy and I'm about to show y'all the... I let this seal for many hours. I don't think you need to wait that long for it to seal, but I just... Sometimes with stuff like this, I just do it at a certain time and then it just, then I come back and do it whenever, you know, I get ready to do epoxy or whatever. So, um, but I show y'all here in a minute that my hand is free of glitter because it's sealed up so well. So, um, I do it at some point. I, I show my hand at some point. Anyways, I put the glitter, I put the epoxy on there. So I'm going to put this, um, coat of epoxy and then I'm going to put another coat of epoxy and then I will do all my sanding because we're going to be doing a peekaboo with vinyl but it is um I, it doesn't it doesn't have to be you know clear because of the we're not putting water slides on it yet or anything we're just going to be doing just vinyl so there you go there's my hand and it's clean of glitter I knew I did it at some point during this thing, so, but I wanted to show y'all that the glitter did not move, so it, it does seal the glitter very well. I'm very impressed with the, um, with the sealing of it. So this is something I don't do very often, but I was going to go into design space. Now, I started off with a square that is the size of the cup from top to bottom and around, right? So it's like 10 and a half by nine and a half or whatever it is. Uh, but you just have to measure your cup to see how it goes. And I would definitely measure it after you do the epoxy and the glittering and all of that, okay? Because you don't want to... Um, you don't want to measure it before and then you're not going to have enough room all the way around because you're going to make it bigger when you put the epoxy on. So I took uh, this shamrock that I had. Um, I will link it down below. No, I'm sorry. I will put it in my Facebook group. So if you join my Facebook group, you can find it in the files there. And I just took it and duplicated it. I made it like one inch and two inch or something like that. But it just depends. Whatever you or a half inch and an inch or something like that, I think is maybe what I did. And um, I just arranged them on the square that is the piece of vinyl that we're going to be using. And I just I just sorted them just, in, you know, randomly kind of placing them so that, that we could get a, a nice peekaboo look or a good enough spacing to kind of still allow the design to be shown on the vinyl. So... Once I got them all arranged in that square, I do not need the square anymore, right? So I'm going to take all of the, I'm going to get rid of the square. I'm going to attach all of these and then I am going to weld them together. And then we are going to cut them out of our vinyl. So welding them together allows them to stay in those spots that we put them on in that square so that when we put them on our tumbler that they will be, you know, that they're not going to, because they would just cut like all in one little row if you didn't, if you didn't attach them or weld them together. You can attach or weld. It doesn't really matter. It either way is going to keep them where they want, where they're going to be. And you'll see how this, it kind of comes out as we're wrapping this around. So I'm wrapping this around just the same as I would, um, you know, any other kind of vinyl wrap, but you do have to make sure that you're wrapping it from the space that you cut those out. You know, don't, don't get crazy with the design. Make sure you're staying within the realm of the square that you made in the very beginning. I hope that makes sense. But, um, Anyways, so it was a little bit difficult in the beginning because um, I was I was having to make sure that the little pieces of the 
the cutout of the clover was, you know, some of them were like folded underneath. And so I had to be very careful when I was pulling them off and making sure that all the little cuts and everything were kind of straight. And so it is, it is, a, I mean, it wasn't difficult. It was just a little more tedious than you would normally uh, do. And that's why I just wanted to show y'all that I was using my little tweezers there to make sure that little pieces of those cutouts were in their place. So then I just made sure that the edge from the, the back, I mean, to the end of it, to that edge that we started out with was sealed down enough, you know, so that we could slice it and cut that excess vinyl off of there. So after that, I, um, this was just basically making sure that there was no hole. I mean, that there was no bubbles in there. I was poking holes in the bubbles and pushing down anything um, that I could see that was, you know, causing it to be whatever. You know what I mean? Like whenever you do the vinyl wrap, it's just going to happen. So, and then I took the bottom and I heated up the bottom vinyl like I like I've been doing which is a lifesaver and then I just pulled it as tight as tight as I can around there and, and then I'm gonna go in and trim that excess off from the middle and we'll have a nice clean transition from the top of the cup to the bottom of the cup and then I also took the heat uh, heat gun and I heated up the top part because it was um I didn't, I went ahead and trimmed, uh, I went ahead and sanded off the rim on the top because I didn't, because there was so much glitter and glue and all that, I, and, uh, and epoxy, the two layers of epoxy. So I wanted to make sure that I got uh, some of that down before we put the vinyl on. So I heated up that top just to kind of make sure that it was going over on top of that, you know, that little bit of a metal piece that we put on there. The metal piece that we exposed let me get my words straight here but um i went ahead and trimmed up that rim like i said so that the vinyl uh whenever we go in with the epoxy and do all that and we can trim up the rim again it's not going to be so thick so it will be able to help we'll be able to do that so i'm going to go in again and show y'all how i arranged the water slide things to to make sure that they were the, the water slide designs i should say so um this is how i go in and find whatever design that it is that i'm going to be doing right so i found these on creative fabrica and i downloaded the file and then i just went through and decided on the different images and things that i was going to pull in to the design so i started off with my square at the beginning like you saw and i'm going to slice open uh, i'm going to slice those shamrocks there so that i can get a perfect view of what the uh, vinyl is going to look like and so i know how to arrange my water slide pieces so in order to keep this you know like i i went ahead and duplicated the shamrocks and then i sh i shut that down with the eye and then i went in and attached them all and then i sliced them through that square and this just gives me an idea of like where my cutouts are and where i how big i need to make things so like this little these little hangy things i was like okay well i need to make them about this big so that they can um you know they not they're not going to be covering up a bunch of the you know glitter or the little peekaboos or whatever so i was i was trying to arrange them you know proportionately i guess is the best way to say that so this is i was just kind of basically showing you how i went about achieving this like, because you don't want to, you want to make sure that you're cutting them at the right sizes to fit in where they need to, or where they can fit in. Also, I went with the things that I really wanted in the very beginning. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to arrange them. And then once I started getting them on there, I was like, okay, I can add a few more things. And so I ended up adding, you know, uh, the horseshoe here and then also adding like some little beers or whatever and so i i just wanted to give y'all a view of design space i don't do that very often but i thought this was an easy way 
for me to show you and um, it wasn't too intricate and I didn't want it to be a 40 minute video so uh, I kind of sped everything up so I apologize for the the speed of everything but um, you know hopefully you can be able to pause it and, and look and see exactly what we did and here I go again putting my head in the way uh, I get very intense sometimes with the with these applications and I just I forget that the camera is like right above my head anyways sorry about that so this these towels that are here I use them all the time but when you see them I'm almost, I always turn them upside down because I don't want all the shamrocks to be in the picture you know in the video when I do my water slides so but I love these these towels because they're they're not they don't soak up a bunch of water and so when you're doing the water slides, they're not going to be drying everything out. So I actually really love these towels, but they happen to be, you know, Clover, St. Patrick's Day towels. So I was like, you know what, this time I'm going to show them, I'm going to do it up, you know, to where all the shamrocks are showing. Although you really can't see the cup so much because now it's kind of disguised, but I thought it would be kind of fun. But you get the point. I mean, we did this last week. We put these uh, water slide, you know, applications on uh, over a peekaboo. It's the same essential idea. I just wanted to give you another look with the vinyl instead of doing crackle, which I love and I've been doing a lot. So I just thought we would just do it with the with the vinyl and show you how to do a little peekaboo there. So, so last week was Mardi Gras, and I have a friend that's from Louisiana, and she's and she's really a big fan of Mardi Gras. And uh, this friend is actually from Louisiana too, and she's she is big fan of Mardi Gras, but. She got married on St. Patrick's Day. So I wanted to do something that was a little more um, individualized for her. Something that was, that means a lot to her. And the, uh, this bear that I put on there, it was I actually got her a bear for her, for her wedding um, from the Build-A-Bear. And so I thought when I saw the bear, I was like, oh, I have to put the bear on. And he does have a hat like that too. And I just, I just thought it was... You know, so there's a lot of little things on here that there's like these little sunglasses that one of the, the one of the first times we ever went out for her wedding, we wore these, these uh, shamrock sunglasses and everything. So anyways, I, I was kind of like, oh, these are, this is a really sentimental moment, you know, and things like that you can take into consideration when you're designing stuff for people. Ended up printing out some little beers and, um, you know, I have drank a lot of a lot a few beers on uh St. Patrick's Day. So that you know that's what you're supposed to do. So anyways, I added a little bunch of clovers and this little I just I just ended up after I showing y'all what I did, I just added a few more things cuz I figured we can probably uh, get away with doing a little bit more, but I wanted to show you just essentially uh, the beginning of it. Anyway, so there's the little sunglasses that uh, I have a picture of. Us. I'll, I'll, maybe I should add it in here. I guess not sunglasses, but glasses. Nonetheless, it was uh, it's all sentimental. And then this is a picture of her with her bear that I made her. So, like I said, it's very sentimental, this cup. It has all the little things that uh, could possibly be meaningful to her and me. And um, that's why I just I thought it was pretty cool. So after that, I let them dry. Um, I probably let them dry overnight. Knowing me, I probably did them at some point and then just let it sit. And um, anyways, after they're dry, which is probably be about an hour or more if you wanted to. Um, anyways, so I put a coat of epoxy on there and then I sanded the heck out of it the second time because or the right after this coat had cured because it was pretty thick and wobbly in the bottom and all you know it was just I had a lot going on at this point so I sanded the bottom really good I sanded the top rim really good I sanded the you know all around the cup and everything just to make sure that we were getting a smooth bottom and a smooth sides and and getting our secure um rim on the top and everything like that so after this I went in with another coat of epoxy and then we were all done and there it is it's so cute <laughs> I love the the difference between the Mardi Gras and this one it they they have just a bit of a of 
you know, their own personality, but it's kind of the same type of thing that we did here. And, um, I did add some additive, some green additive that I just got in my SOC box. So if you recreate this, please tag me and join my Facebook group down below. And then also subscribe and comment and let me know what you think about this whole look. And like I said, if you recreate this or if it inspires you to do something else, please tag me in it and uh, I will see you next time.